This video, snap. Oh. This video is brought to you by EA Game Changers. I'm not being paid, they just sent me the pack early. So with the new expansion pack coming out for The Sims 4, Cottage Living, we get a new world that's called Henford on Bagley, and there are a bunch of new people living in this town. So I wanna give you a little tour of the townies, basically, and then also rate them, because um, judging people is fun. So this is the town, I've got my own sim living up here, 10 out of 10 for them. But there are a few more households, and then a bunch of other households that don't actually have lots in the town. My god, is that a fox? Is that what the foxes look like? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no. Okay, that- something's glitched there. Okay, cool. Well, <laughs> let's get started, shall we? The first family is the Watson family. They've got a big 64 by 64 lot. The description says, Inheriting the family estate was always the plan, but Thomas may be in over his head. For a man who equates success with crop size, he's losing both his confidence and his family. While his wife Rami loves the country air, her feelings for her husband are becoming stale, and her affections have wandered. The oldest of their three children, Rashida, feels trapped, preferring to dream of future outside Henfer on Bagley. Dreams that have sparked something between her and a kindred soul. The two youngest couldn't be more different. Imran treasures the security of life at home, while Mara can be found bravely venturing out in into the unknown. Now this pack has lore. So I happen to know that the teenage daughter has a little thing going on with the grocery deliverer, the teenage son of the mayor, which is so cool. They have a massive house and obviously a massive lot because it's a 64 by 64 lot. So they have this big garden in the front. They have some crops out back, a big pond out back, a barn and a coop, of course. There's even like a little play area for the kids. Inside the house, you can see they have a pretty big living room, dining room, kitchen. Upstairs, each kid has their own bedroom. Like, the house is adorable. But please, take your attention to the relationships panels, because his wife, Rami, and him don't have that much of a romance bar anymore, which I think is so cool. They haven't done this yet. Like, they've sort of pretended, like, oh, so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so don't get along anymore. But they've actually made it so, like, him and Rami have kind of fallen out of love. Rami does not like her daughter's crush or the mayor, unfortunately. I think the teenage daughter has a little thing going on with the mayor's son. Not a fan of Agnes Cromwellbottom. I can't say I blame her. The kids are pretty much friends with everybody, obviously. And the mom has the style influencer career, which I think is really cool. It's fun to have, like, this husband who inherited this family farm who wants to keep it running and the wife doesn't really like it out here that much her kid wants to get away you can see she's really good at cooking and gardening level eight cooking skill husband's level six gardening skill has the fitness and violin skills teenager likes to write and play games i mean like everybody pretty much has some pretty high skills level seven motor skill these sims are like actually properly set up you know like there's a storyline and for that reason this household 10 out of 10 i love this I like desperately dream of lore like this in The Sims. I'm so glad to see it happening. Oh wait, I meant to open them in Cass. If we look in Cass, you can get a better view of The Sims. They also all have likes and dislikes, which I kind of expect, but it's cool now that we actually have them to see them being used in the townies that are being set up. Look at how cute this outfit is. I love these Sims. This is the teenage daughter. She's lactose intolerant. <laughs> she wears pretty much all black, it looks like, which is kind of fun. I love, I love this dress. She has some really cute outfits. They did a good job with these. This is the mom. I think she's very pretty. I'm not gonna lie. <gasps> Cute outfit. Oh, and then cold weather as well. The dad, Thomas, whose family seems to not like him very much. I feel bad for him. <laughs> I guess he's hot-headed and materialistic, so maybe I don't blame them. Oh no. And then the, the youngest son. Every one of them is so cute. <laughs> the next household is this one. It's just one sim. Home to Cecilia Kang, it says, after living in the big city and having her heart broken, Cecilia decided to ditch everything she knew for a small garden plot and some chickens. She's still looking for someone to share this life with, though after a date she'd love to forget with local creature keeper Michael Bell, she's happy to only form long-term attachments with the critters that visit for now. And she actually, like, has a sentiment from a failed date with that sim. Here are her outfits though, she's non-committal, which I love. An animal enthusiast and ambitious. Loves the color pink. Here are her little outfits. I think they did a good job. Honestly, the new cast is just so good, you can't really go wrong with it. <laughs> so she has kind of like a converted barn type house in my mind. Got some chickens, a little pond, some garden plots. And then her house is kind of interesting. I kind of like it. Gives this sort of cool loft vibe, has one bedroom upstairs. She's a freelance programmer, which is kind of fun. I like the idea of her like living in the city as a programmer before and now she's like gone remote and moved to the countryside. She's got a bunch of skills, cooking, cross-stitch, gardening, logic, programming. Doesn't know many people yet because she did just move here, but she did literally go on a date with Michael Bell and look at this. She's got a bad sentiment that says awkward after a bad date 
and he's smitten so he's got a big crush on her but she thought it was awkward i love this i love that so much like the tea you know i i love this kind of lore the next family are these two the scott family they actually own this gnome's arms bar so you'll see the wife working as a bartender there every day and it says like pub owner but as owners of the gnome's arms finchwick's beloved pub the scots are living the dream well Sarah's dream, at least. Simon, a city boy with no more city around, still feels a bit awkward every time he runs into a chicken. Still, he's here to support his wife's dream. Will their hopes of adding a new member to their tiny family change things up for better or worse? Ooh. <laughs> I love her outfit and I love this new hair. Self-assured, cheerful, outgoing, feels appropriate for like the local pub owner, likes the color red. Here are her outfits. I think she's so pretty. Honestly, they did such a good job with the Sims in this pack. Here's the husband, Simon. He's family oriented and clumsy and a goofball and he wants to have a big happy family. I love the storyline too of them wanting to have a kid so badly. And in their house, there's like already a nursery set up. So here's their house. They've got a really nice house, genuinely. In the back, they've got some chickens, a couple garden plots. I love this little sunroom they've got going on here. Inside is adorable. And then look upstairs, the baby already has a nursery. Oh, it's so cute. Anyway, Sarah is pretty close friends with Agnes. Obviously her and Simon are married. They're both unemployed because they like own the pub, you know? But she's got a really high mixology skill, obviously Max, because she owns the pub. And she has charisma, fitness, and video gaming skills. He's got charisma, comedy, cooking, and mixology too. He does not like Agnes. I don't blame him. She is mean and she is violent. She hit me with her purse today. And then they technically work and own this building. So you'll see them in here all the time. And then last but not least for like the actual in-town residents, the ones that have homes, is the Moody and McMillan household. It says, after working an office job for more years than he cared to admit, Derek found a man willing to live the rustic dream of his youth and the two of them moved to his family cottage and never left. When not fending off financial offers from developers who see their home as a prime target, Ian and Derek balance their days between adventure and quiet, depending on who's in charge of the agenda. Despite or perhaps because of their differences, time has been most kind to these elderly lovebirds who live a contented retirement as key members of the Henford on Bagley community. Oh my god. And I like that concept a lot too, where it's like developers want to steal their land because there's already a rental like Airbnb that lives next door to theirs because they have this like prime cottage real estate next to the waterfall, you know, like it makes sense. Okay, so Ian is a goofball, a foodie and outgoing. He wants to be the friend of the world. Hates fitness, but likes handiness and piano. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice he had tattoos. Okay. I like how the roses look. Those are cool. Anyway, here are his outfits. <laughs> I like this Sim. I think he's really sweet. And then his husband, Derek. Derek's an animal enthusiast, neat, and a bookworm. He's a best-selling author, loves cooking, gardening, hates programming, <laughs> and likes to write. I love that he like worked as a programmer his whole life and now he's like, no, never again. Hate it. But he's so sweet. Look at him. Just the cutest Sim ever. Oh my, the sunscreen. Oh, I just want to hug him. <laughs> Anyway, there's those two. But here's their little house. Same thing, little cottage vibes. They've got a really fancy garden, some crops, some chickens, you know, living the dream out here. <laughs> I can see why it's considered prime real estate, but inside their house, they've got like one guest bedroom and then their bedroom. Downstairs, some nice kitchen space and everything. I think this is one of my favorite houses in the game. Obviously both retired. Derek, level nine cooking, cross-stitch gardening, gourmet cooking, writing skills, all of those. I like how programming is just not even listed. <laughs> and then Ian has charisma, comedy, handiness, mischief, and piano. Like, they're pretty talented sims. He's friends with Agatha. And I like how Derek kind of doesn't know many people except for his husband. I think that's intentional because Ian's the more, like, outgoing one, you know? But then there are households that aren't actually in the world but are, like, pivotal members of the community. They just don't have houses. For example, the mayor. <laughs> so Lavina is the mayor of the town and her son lives with her. It says, raising role as a single mom hasn't been easy but Lavina has grown to love the relationship as well as the pleasure she gets out of keeping the village running smoothly and being a good neighbor. Raul looks up to his capable mother but after living in this small village all his life yearns to travel and see the world. He can't quite bring himself to leave his mom all on her own though. And obviously he's got a little crush kind of thing going on with the teenage daughter of the other household. And he's the grocery deliverer so if you order groceries in town he'll bring them to you. And then obviously she's the mayor so she like hosts all the events and they're always both in town all the time so you can talk to him. She's got her little mayor outfit on. She's creative, gloomy, and a foodie, but she wants to have a successful lineage. Here are her outfits. I think she's so pretty. I love the look. Like this, I love this so much. Got some swimwear, hot weather outfit. She wears the like mayor's look for the most part, which makes sense. Likes cooking and fishing, hates comedy though. Okay, <laughs> that's a bit 
Hmm. And then her son, he's got like the the work costume on, but then obviously he's got his own regular clothes too. He's active and loves the outdoors. He wants to be a renaissance sim. Hates comedy too? What is wrong with these two? Well, you both- you're just not funny, that's why. <laughs> he likes fishing and fitness. Okay. They don't have a house, they're just like around. I think it's sort of trying to imply that they live like in a lot that's not here, but I kind of wish they actually had a house, I'm not gonna lie. I would prefer that they didn't have so many like not in the world households. This Sim Goldbloom, she runs the grocery stand. Cheerful, foodie, outgoing, friend of the world. <laughs> Likes cooking and mischief, but not the violin. Obviously she wears this outfit for the most part, but she's got a couple other outfits going on. Looking good. So you'll find her in her stand, like parked out in front of the pub all the time. It says the best part of living in cozy Henford on Bagley for Kim is the fact that she gets to meet so many new friends. From spirited little Myra to that dreamy Michael Bell. The grocery stall is also a matter of pride for her, a central hub of social activity and quality produce. Having seen this village through its ups and downs, Kim is always eager to hear the news of what's happening in the lives of her customers. So it sounds like she's got a little thing going on with Michael. Michael Bell is the like creature keeper in town. He doesn't actually live in town, but he's got like a fake house. So I'll show you. You can find him in this neighborhood, way across this bridge. He's got like a fake house kind of hidden out in the mountain. And then he'll usually be hanging out like in front of it or like sitting in his garden, kind of wandering around this area. He's got like a bunch of little garden planters set out and like bunnies around. <laughs> and you can talk to these Sims. You can get like quests from all of them. I remember the Sim with the bad date? It was Michael. So his household, it says, Michael's always found more comfort in the company of animals than with other Sims, which can make for some awkward dates, but serves him well as Bramblewood's creature keeper. After fixing up a rundown cottage in the woods many years ago, he's been the informal caretaker of various plants and animals that call this place home ever since. Here's what he looks like. He pretty much always wears this outfit. It's like his special creature keeper one again, but he's got a couple other things going on, you know? Animal enthusiast, loner, loves the outdoors, likes fishing and gardening and painting, does not like video games. How could you, Michael? I kinda wanna like add him to my household so I can see his skills. Cooking, fishing, gardening, knitting? How does he have the knitting skill? I don't have that pack installed right now. <laughs> that seems, I'm genuinely really confused. Okay, knitting, painting, and writing. I wonder if he was supposed to have the cross stitch skill, but somebody did an oopsie. I don't know. This isn't the final game, by the way, so they could still change and fix that. If not, it's okay if he likes knitting. I like knitting. And obviously he went on a date with Cecilia once, but that didn't go well, so. Then last but not least is Agnes and Agatha Crumplebottom except for the fact that they're not in the household menu. I don't know why, <laughs> I just, I can't find them, ever. I don't know where Agnes and Agatha are. They're missing, so we can't access their household menu. There's no description, I don't know. But they are in the world. You'll find them like alternating running this stall. Right now Agnes is here, and then her cousin Agatha shows up sometimes too. This is the stall that Kim runs. They're sort of across from each other. And Miss Agnes Crumplebottom, <laughs> our dear friend, she and her cousin apparently live in town. They've got some fancy outfits, by the way. They look real nice. I like how she just wears the same thing in a different color. But Agnes is really fancy, always looks prim and proper. Look at her swimwear! Oh, oh my god. Hot weather, cold weather, she does not take this coat off. She's hot-headed, a bookworm, a loner, and a freelance botanist. This is her cousin, Agatha, who is romantic, a snob, and outgoing, and a serial romantic. I love her outfits. I think she's so fun. Like, the bright colors are so cute. They did such a good job with these sims. Like, the, the lore and the detail and the storytelling, it's perfect. <laughs> now, like I said, Agnes is not very nice. Let me read to you about Agnes Crumplebottom. She resided during her lifetime in Pleasant View. She's the daughter of Simon and Prudence Crumplebottom, both of Pleasant View. She has an older sister, Cornelia Goth, and Mortimer Goth is her nephew. So you might recognize those names. Mortimer Goth is her nephew. Now, Agnes has had like a different thing going on in The Sims 1, The Sims 3, and now in The Sims 4. So that's The Sims 1. In The Sims 3, the young and unfortunate Agnes makes an appearance in Sunset Valley. She has a very modern house. Her husband, Eric Darling, is deceased. She's best friends with her sister, Cornelia Goth, but she barely knows her sister's husband or her, her nephew, Mortimer. Agnes's bio states that she married Eric, but didn't take his last name because he drowned on their honeymoon. His death left her bitter and lonely, and there's a partially finished nursery in her house which includes a crib, a teddy bear, and a giraffe picture, possibly indicating that she and Eric were going to have a baby. So, you know, I guess it's not that surprising that she's a bit mean. But now, in this game, <laughs> she's old. Oh, there's her cousin. I might try and flirt with her just so I can show you what happens. Are you trying to get fresh with me, young man? Take that cheek somewhere else! Look, look! <laughs> get him! I love this game so much. Anyway, 
Um, Agnes is violent. So, I guess her husband died when they were very young. I'm just saying, he drowned on their honeymoon. Did anybody see what happened? Was she involved? But anyway, those are all the sims of Henford on Bagley. I know I said I was gonna rate them, but they all get 10s out of 10 from me. I'm really impressed with this town. I think this is one of the best worlds they've ever made. Like, the amount of detail that's gone into all the houses, because actual players made them, they, they hired simmers to do it. So the houses are perfect. The lore involved with the sims and, like, the connections between them. The way that when you talk talk to them, they'll tell you stories about the town, like, deepening the lore. Like, I just, I have been wanting a thing like this for so long. This is, in my opinion, like, hands down, their best world ever made for The Sims 4. Great work on The Sims. Whoever made them, I, massive props to you. I know from my experience, like, doing the, the houses for Snowy Escape, before they made The Sims, they knew what the stories were going to be, so they told me, like, hey, Kayla, you're gonna build a house for these two grandparents who are raising their teenage granddaughter. Here's some more detail about them, blah blah blah. So I know they've put a lot of time and effort and, like, detail into the backstories of these Sims, and I really think it pays off. I'm just, I'm so pleasantly surprised. I love this pack. I love this. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite household? I think the Crumple Bottoms, like, take the cake for me. They have to, with the like elderly couple coming in close second, because I just, I love them. I think they're so cute. And on that note, I'm gonna go, so I will see you all tomorrow. Bye everybody. I'm just so happy. I love this pack. I love this pack so much. I could just sit here and like rave about it all day. It's so cool.